thing that's been shown over and over again in numerous well-controlled studies to improve muscle performance is creatine. Early on, there was a lot of controversy about creatine, but there are many studies. If you want, you can go to this website that everyone now knows I love, which is this free website, examine.com. Uh, so 18 studies supporting that muscle creatine content can be increased by ingesting creatine. How much creatine? Well, I asked the experts and they tell me that for somebody who's about 180 pounds, five grams a day should be sufficient or so heavier than 180. So if you get like, if you're a 220 pound or 230 pound person, 10 to 15 grams of creatine, People lighter than 180 pounds, maybe three to five grams in creatine or even one to th three grams. Creatine is a fuel source at for early, early in bouts of activity, for high intensity activity. It is also a fuel source for neurons in the brain and it can have some cognitive enhancing effects. So creatine is a very interesting molecule. Early on when it was released as a supplement, it was thought that you had to load it in higher dosages for a few days and then maintain it lower dosages. So you take, you know, 20 or 30 grams a day, then back off to five or 10. It doesn't seem to be the case that you can get all the benefits from taking the dosages at the low level. I just mentioned a few moments ago uh, as they relate to body weight throughout. So salt and electrolytes, absolutely key. You need those present. You need to be well hydrated. Creatine seems to have a performance enhancing effect. There are 66 studies, 66, showing that power output is greatly increased anywhere from 12 to 20%. And this is sprinting and running and jumping as well as weightlifting by creatine. The ability to hydrate your body is improved by creatine because of the way that it brings more uh, water into cells of various kinds. As an indirect effect, it can help in increase lean mass because of the way that it brings more water into muscle and probably also because of the way that if you get stronger, you can generate more force and generate more hypertrophy. It reduces fatigue. Seven studies have shown that it reduces fatigue. Um, there are even some interesting effects on improving cognition after traumatic brain injury, although that's a serious medical condition and situation, so you absolutely should talk to a board-certified physician before adding anything or taking anything out of your current regimen. There are a few other effects that are interesting and notable, but the big ones are the ones that I referred to before about increased power output, etc. I just want to emphasize that creatine can increase this hormone that we talked about in the testosterone episode, dihydrotestosterone which is testosterone converted by 5-alpha reductase into dihydrotestosterone. It's the more dominant androgen in humans, leads to increases in strength and libido and so forth. It also can increase male pattern baldness. Some people, not everybody, experience some hair loss with creatine. Other people don't. Some people experience accelerated beard growth because basically DHC has the opposite effect on hair follicles on the face as it does on the scalp. Some people don't. Women who ingest creatine. There are essentially no data showing that it, it increases hair loss or facial hair growth, but of course everyone is different. So you can go to examine.com, you can explore those studies. So creatine, definitely a powerful performance enhancing molecule. Mm -hmm.